All right, it is Billy Q himself, Billy Quarantillo, fresh off a uh, successful cornering gig at Madison Square Garden. I guess, uh, how did it feel being in the uh, in the coach's role there at uh, the most famous arena? Yeah, you know, I'm a man of many hats. Uh, I got to uh, corner one of my longtime teammates, Matt Frivola, and what a year he's having uh, this past weekend. Obviously, first-round knockout. Uh, couldn't have wrote it any better uh, earlier this year got a knockout as well so two and0 this year with two knockouts uh I ha- I've had a tough year with injuries and stuff like that but but cornering all these fighters uh, has really motivated me moving forward and getting ready for my fight that's awesome man we'll definitely talk about your fight I did want to ask you uh, how hard did the celebrations go afterwards because I did hear a whole lot of steamroller <laughs> chants out there I, I got a feeling a, a, a frosty beverage or two may have been consumed afterwards. Uh, yeah, those guys, uh, they, they ended up going to, I think it was called Mustang Harry's, uh, in New York and they were, they were getting after it. Uh, obviously I have a fight coming up next month, so I did not partake. I was, I was very, uh, disciplined. I wanted to, you know, not have any drinks. I, I haven't had any, a drink since, um, you know, in the last couple months, uh, just getting myself ready, but it was, uh, it was fun just being around that atmosphere. I always tell people, especially people that have never fought before, you can't buy that feeling of going out there and, you know, putting months and months into work and going out there and getting a win like that, especially at Madison Square Garden. You can't sell that feeling and you can't buy that feeling. So it was just a great night for the team, for everyone involved. And uh, he's going to be cornering me in my fight and we hope to repeat uh, out in Vegas. I love it, man. That's great, dude. Yeah, it's funny. You know, you talk about that feeling. Just before we started talking, I was watching the clip that he posted uh, on his uh, from Frivola's Twitter account from from uh, Ray Longo saying, you know, make that fucking walk, Maddie. I was like, that's what I need in my corner. I, I need Ray Longo, like, just here in my life every day, just helping me, you know, get my work day started. You know, make that fucking mm-hmm. walk, Johnny. Yeah, he adds, like, his accent and his – just <laughs> just knowing his history, he's been through so much. He's had – three world champions at his gym and so many guys that have, have had so, such success. Anything that Ray says either to Matt or to me, I listen to and uh, I take his advice uh, very seriously. I love it, man. All right. Well, let's talk about the journey you're on, man. I know uh, the battle of the bills, of course, didn't come to fruition this summer. Um, mm-hmm. I, I guess injuries. I mean, is there anything you can talk about? Like what, what happened that you had to withdraw? And I guess what's the recovery been like for you? Yeah, it was super unfortunate. I can talk about it now because I'm 100% healthy. Thank God. It was a definitely a really hard year for me. It, when when fighting is your job and you're not able to do that, it's very stressful. So as you know, I was supposed to fight Bill Elgio, Battle of the Bills. We were hyping it up. It was going to be a great fight. Um, I ha- I've had some knee injuries in the past that kind of led to it. It's kind of a, a culmination of a few different things. And I ended up eating a really bad leg kick. And I went and got the MRI right away. I thought I was going to be healthy. It was one of those things that it wasn't a complete tear, but it was enough of an injury that I just needed to rest it. And it was really hard because people are messaging me. Hey man, I got tickets to your fight. I can't wait. I can't like, you know, I bought and I, and meantime, I can't even, I could barely walk and I can't even hit mitts. So it was a really stressful time this summer, but it's part of the sport. As much as I wanted to fight, it was it was the the best decision I could have made to have to pull out of that fight. Obviously, it's the first fight I've ever had to pull out of in my whole career. So I'm past that chapter. I'm looking forward to Alexander Hernandez, and I'm looking to save this year. Go out there, get a huge victory at T-Mobile Arena, and this year will be it'll still be a great year. Getting this win, uh, December tenth. I love it. How tough was it for you to pull out, Billy? I mean, I, I, you know, fighting Long Island, like I got to imagine, you know, kind of being up in your neck of the woods, there was maybe mm-hmm. more thought given into it. I mean, was there any part of you that was like, oh, let's just go out there and risk this? Or was it an easy choice to go? There's absolutely no way I can fight. Yeah, so it was it was a easy decision when I finally made it. And the reason why is because I, I, I heard it in, I actually heard it in Long Island. I was training at uh, Law MMA with Frivola and all those guys. And at first, it it was one of those where you don't know if it's going to be an injury that is going to keep you out forever or it's going to be fine within like a week or two. So like I said, I got the MRIs. There was no major tears. It was a severe bone bruise mixed with some minor tears in my knee. And I was hoping just to tough it out. 
was doing all the, the ice baths and doing everything I could. And I even waited another like two weeks after that because there was no, nothing major. And th this is uh, the first time I really realized, even though it's not a major injury on paper, it was, I, I couldn't even walk on it for weeks. And even like the day of the fight, we, I ended up going back home to Western New York and watching the fight and during the fight, I still couldn't even like, could barely walk on it, couldn't really run on it. So it was, it was the right decision, unfortunately, but, uh, it is what it is. It's, it's a, it's a vicious sport and I'm, I'm lucky that it wasn't, you know, a torn ACL or, or something like that. That's going to keep me out for a very long time. And I'm lucky to still 2022, still go out there and get a huge win and then start the year off right next year. I love it. All right, well, let's put the bad stuff on, like like the good. You said USC 282 coming up in Las Vegas. You fought in Las Vegas plenty of times, right? Mm -hmm. But not T-Mobile Arena, right? The UFC Apex has been pretty friendly to you. But now we're talking about the big building. We're talking about actually mm -hmm. on the strip. I mean, we're talking about the real fight capital of the world. I mean, is that the way you're kind of feeling? I mean, I know you fought at Madison Square Garden, so it's not like you yep. haven't done this before. But I, I always feel like sometimes when you guys come out and fight in Vegas and it's the Apex, I mean – Thank God we had the apex during, you know, COVID and all that, but it's mm -hmm. not fighting in front of 17,000 on the strip at T-Mobile, right? It's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's way different. And to think, so I've already fought, I counting the ultimate fighter. So I've had two fights on the ultimate fighter and five fights at the apex. So I've already fought in Vegas seven times, but I've never fought in an arena before, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, so yeah, it's different. I've, I, you know, I've been talking to you about this for years. Every time I'm at the apex, I'm like, man, I wish there was fans there. So I was actually trying to get on that UFC Orlando card, the uh, you know the Kevin Holland uh, Wonder Boy fight the week before because I could. It's uh, that that arena is like an hour away. Um, but when I asked them about that fight, they said, "What about a week later at the pay per view uh, against Alexander Hernandez?" And I I thought my manager was texting the wrong guy. It was it was <laughs> J it was Jason House. I'm like I'm like Alexander Hernandez. I'm like, he's not even in my weight class. <laughs> and I'm like, do, I'm like, do they want me to go up to 55? I'm like, it's a, that's a strange request, but I mean, I, I was down for it. Uh, but then they said, Alex is coming down to 45. Team Obla Arena, I said yes right away. He said yes right away. Uh, if you look at his resume, he's fought a lot of killers. So I knew he wasn't going to say no to me. And uh, here we are, ready to do it, Team Obla, with fans. I can't wait. I love it. How do you how do you game plan for a guy that is changing weight classes, right? Because I know when I'm always trying to break down fights, I don't know. It's like, it's like a question mark until I see a guy make the weight. Until I know how you know how they look, it's like I, I feel like there's a question mark on them how they're going to perform. That said, Alexander Hernan is one of the gamest dudes you'll ever meet. You know what I mean? He's pretty mentally strong. So I don't know how how do you factor that in at all when you're preparing? Yeah, I have to, obviously in the back of my mind, I'm, I know it's probably going to be a hard weight cut for him and he, he hasn't fought in the UFC at 145 yet, but I'm going into it prepared for the best Alexander Hernandez that's ever fought. I'm, I'm looking at his fight, you know, he knocked out Darius, he's knocked out uh, Gritz, who was on my season of, the, of uh, the Ultimate Fighter. So I'm just going there with the mentality that this is going to be the best fighter that you fought. He's probably going to be a little bit smaller. He's probably going to be a little bit faster. I'm expecting those things um, because if you prepare for someone that's going to be depleted or if he has any type of weaknesses, then you're not preparing yourself properly. So I'm going into this fight prepared to fight the best Alexander Hernandez, and he better get ready to fight the best Billy Q because I'm game and I'm very ready for this fight. I love it. And then the big question, of course, you get the big win, you celebrate, do you jump on an early flight to get back for Bill's Jets the next day? Do you, do you stay in <laughs> Vegas and maybe watch it at a sports book there? Like, what's what's the play? Yeah, so um, if, you, if you know or don't know, most of my family lives in Buffalo, in western New York. A lot of them live in, uh, like, the D.C. area. So we're kind of looking at this as a little bit of a family reunion. So we're going to spend that Sunday all hanging out in Vegas. I'm sure we're going to be watching the Bills beat up on the Jets. They're going to get – it's kind of a uh, – revenge game for the bills so we're gonna spend a uh, sunday in vegas and then i'm gonna fly back monday morning and come back to my baby my baby unfortunately he can't come to the fight but uh he'll be watching with his grandparents here in tampa that's awesome man well it's exciting to get you back it's it's crazy to think it's been all the way since usc 268 since we had a chance to see you compete so i guess talk to you about the goal here man i mean 
is it just you know just a win and keep moving? Do you feel like you kind of need to seize some of the momentum back that you had, you know, before this injury? I mean, what's kind of the overall goal here? Yeah, the goal. It's a hundred percent just go out there and win, no matter what it takes. I think I went into the MSG fight with Shane Burgos. I was really in my mind. I was like, I got to put on a show for the fans. I got to go get a big knockout. And I think because of that, I kind of got away from the game plan a little bit, and it was more so. You know, I landed some big shots early, and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to knock this guy out. And next thing you know, the fight's over, and he's still standing there. So this fight is more, as much as I want to put on a show for everyone, it's more so you got 15 minutes. You got to get your hand raised. You got to move on and move up in the rankings. So I think it, I think putting us two in the same cage, we're going to put on a show either way. But as long as I get my hand raised at the end of the fight, whether it's end of the – whether it's a one minute fight or a 15 minute fight, I just need to get my hand raised and get back in that win column. I love it, man. Well, it's an absolutely stacked lineup. There's a lot of fun matchups on it, but this one, this might be the MMA Twitter main event right here, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, MMA Twitter's got your back. They want to see you in there. And uh, I'm excited to see you back here in Vegas, but in front of the big crowd over at T Mobile. So uh, we'll just wish you the best of luck in uh, the final preparation and look forward to seeing you out here putting on the show, Billy. Awesome, John. I can't wait, man. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be one of my best fight. It's gonna be my best fight. I'm in the best shape of my life. And in front of the fans is when I really get excited and really put on a show and, and I just can't wait for it.